Hello, good morning. Um, my name is Reinhard Krickel, CEO of, uh, for Genesis, and my talk is going to take nine minutes. So the length of stay for you for my presentation is nine minutes. Let me show you where length of stay matters. So I need to get the clicker, and then we go. Slides up. Perfect. Um, what we are asking for to start with is uh, a 25 million equity rounds uh, to be raised in the second half of this year. Uh, we want to scale European and US commercialization with this round. Uh, we have CE mark. We expect to have FDA approval this summer, so this will be a post FDA round. And to set your context, and I'll come back in a minute for my length of stay argument uh, a second ago, uh, critical care capacity is a scarce resource. We have all learned that painfully during COVID, you know, wearing masks, um, having uh, lockdowns, being vaccinated, all these kind of things were required to manage the limited uh, critical care capacities. Now, without you know, COVID basically out of the door, we think it's resolved. Well, unfortunately, the bad news are it's not resolved because actually staff, critical care staff is burned out. Um, nurses have quit their job. Uh, so there's really a drain of people in the critical care. So critical care beds nowadays can't be staffed anymore properly. So it remains a scarce resource even post COVID and there's no short term fix, unfortunately. So why does length of stay matter? So I come back to that because for patients, obviously, they can, if they treat it uh, well, they can get out of the ICU faster, uh, get home earlier. For the healthcare system, it matters because reducing length of stay frees up beds and saves dollars. That's what we want, right? Um, and why is this important? Because we can make a difference here with Phagenics. Because by treating dysphagia, which actually prevents discharging patients in large magnitudes from the from nuclear care, we can reduce length of stay. Because dysphagia, basically the patients can't swallow, can't manage even their own secretions, is associated with increased length of stay because longer duration of intubation of tracheotomy, risk of readmissions, and independent predictor of death. Phagenics is a neurostimulator which treats dysphagia, and for the first time, dysphagia can be treated in the critical care. That wasn't possible before. There is no treatment option in the moment available. And by the way, just to clarify that, we have done our homework to get ready for commercialization. So we have compelling clinical data, more than 15 studies been published in Lancet, including seven RCTs. We have CMAG already, I mentioned that. We are FDA breakthrough designation. Um, so we will, uh, we're expecting to have FDA clearance this summer. We have proven uh, that we can significantly reduce lengths of stay. There it is again, lengths of stay is so important. So, so that means we can save dollars. We can actually free up critical care capacity. As we speak about dollars, by the way, we have entered reimbursement uh, with FDA approval, so that gives an additional upside to finance our system. We own the space, so we have invented that. It's, we're the first of its kind, so we have a strong IP portfolio to protect, protect that space. It's also why I have to go through a de novo approval because we actually are first in that whole space, we're creating that space. And we have a strong team. We are a European company based in the United Kingdom, but we already have a strong executive team in the US getting ready for a launch here. So, there we go. Um, and uh, just to kind of give you a little bit better understanding what's the problem about. And apologies for a little bit simple comparison, but I think it's important for us to understand what this is about. Imagine the following. A river overflows its banks because of a massive clog. Well, all our efforts now focus on fighting the water with water buckets. It's not going to be very productive because guess what, the, the river keeps flooding if you don't remove the problem, if you don't remove the cause of the flooding, which in this case is a clock. So let me go to my world, of course. Patients who can't swallow aspirate their own secretions. So saliva spills into the airway, so that keeps saliva being produced. It can't be swallowed away, so it's kind of the same thing which has to be done is the current center of care is frequent suctioning. So here you have actually fighting the water with the buckets again. We just suck it away, but we don't treat the cause. And by not treating the cause, let's say the clock in my river example, the patient doesn't get better. But with treating phagenics in the critical care, all of a sudden we can remove the clock. We can treat the cause and the patient actually um, can remain, uh, get better. So phagenics, that's our product, the neurostimulator, uh, regains swallowing control, treating dysphagia directly in the critical care. I told you that's not possible right now. So it makes a huge difference. 
How does Phagenics work? Pretty simple. Phagenics retrains the brain in three days. So it's a neurostimulator I mentioned it before. Uh, we stimulate it with three consecutive days. We just put a very simple catheter through the nose, touching with the electrodes the pharynx, being connected to the base station you see in the picture. And by stimulating the pharynx, we reactivate the brain. It's like a strong sensor input, which retrains the brain in three days. Um, the good thing is that temporary therapy, just to be applied for three days, there's no implant, it's just, it's just put through the nose, touching the pharynx, there's no surgery. Um, and there's also, and that's so critical for treating patients in critical care, there's no patient involvement required. We can do that without patient being actively involved. And we can do it while still breathing tubes are in place. And there are zero adverse events in any of our studies, and there's over 700 patients being studied right now. So it's a really safe device. So basically, how can we now reduce lengths of stay? So the one thing you should take away from that, from that slide is um, we can reduce lengths of stay in different critical care setups. In, for example, drug optimized patients, we have shown in fast track 22 days lengths of stay reduction, 22 days. Uh, for intubated patients, two new studies being published this year, one 13 days length of stay reduction, one seven days length of stay reduction. That's a lot. It's weeks to months length of stay reduction depending on the care setup. What does it mean in terms of health economic impact? So this slide shows you for the United States, every day lengths of stay basically reduce, we can reduce, reduce also cost to the caregiver or to the hospital. So what you see is already on day three, there's a net benefit for the hospital uh, after purchasing our device, after they've done all the treatments, on the, from day three onwards, it's a positive. So I told you in our studies, we have shown seven to 22 days length of stay reduction. So do you see what this is on our chart? For example, seven days, it gets us about 9,000 net benefit per patient. And it, of course, the more days we save, the better it is. So we have calculated the annual impact. For example, for an average ICU here in the neighborhood, UCSF, about one million net savings. But also I told you freeing up beds is important. So 12 additional patients can be treated in that ICU per year because we free up beds, we get the patients out faster. It's a critical scarce resource. For the LTAC setup, uh, Gaylord is an example on the East Coast, is an LTAC because also their patients are with drugiotomies and need to be dealt with about, about an, a million net savings for those. And 29 additional patients can be treated in their care facility. Keep in mind it's about 10 to 15% of their overall stroke population. And by the way, that example is only for Medicare stroke patients. It's not the entire population. I just kept it conservative. Let me just... Yep, uh, just also mention one thing, is I spoke about the mechanical ventilation case. Of course, uh, the range of dysphagia uh, is larger, so there's also after stroke, patients have a high likelihood of being um, dysphagic, even without critical care setup, even without ventilation, or also patients uh, with persistent dysphagia care is something we can help with. So those patients would actually fall out of the system, still the dysphagia not properly addressed. So the opportunity we target is even bigger. I mentioned now the mechanical ventilation space because it's of course the biggest business opportunity. Our model is really the, uh, the razor blade model. So we charge four and a half thousand catheter costs per patient. 90% um, gross margin already now without actually yet scaling the business and we are active commercially in Europe. Um, and we expect it's kind of a 2.3 2, 2 million TAM um, across the United States and Europe. Take home message, improves outcomes, decreases cost of care, and frees up beds, lengths of stay, I told you. Um, and then uh, we treat dysphagia in the critical care. It's just not something possible right now. And this is my last slide. We commercialize in Europe, go to market uh, 2022 in the United States this year, 25 million equity round, that's what we look for, post FDA. We're establishing right now also strategic partnership discussions and we're looking for a trade sale, IPO, three years, see what's gonna happen. Thank you very much. My length of stays up.